The murder of 14-year-old Emmett Till in Mississippi in 1955 is widely considered the spark that ignited the civil rights movement. He was kidnapped, tortured, his body dumped in a river. The two white men charged with killing the black boy were acquitted. Now, more than 60 years later, the Justice Department says it's going to reopen the case because it's received new information. They haven't said what that information is. But revelations made in historian Tim Tyson's book, The Blood of Emmett Till, reportedly led to the Justice Department's decision. I interviewed Tyson in February of 2017, and he said Carolyn Bryant Dunham, the white woman at the center of the case, told him she lied when she testified under oath that Till grabbed her by the waist and threatened her. And Emma Till's cousin, who witnessed the kidnapping, says he was never interviewed by police. But he told us about the fear and terror of that night. We had picked cotton that day. It was a Wednesday evening, August. 1955. Emmett Till's cousin, Pastor Wheeler Parker, was 16 years old. He lived in Chicago. That summer, Wheeler and his grandfather took a train south with Emmett to visit family in Mississippi. I went into the store, and Miss Bryant, she waited on me, and while she's waiting on me, Emmett Till came in the store. I left him in the store for a short time. Parker says an uncle they were visiting in Mississippi went into the store to be with Emmett. And while we were out of the store, Miss Bryant came out of the store. And Emmett whistled at her, and we just could not believe that he had done that. We made a beeline for the car. Openly, publicly, black guy whistles a white woman? That was way out of bounds. Never heard of such a thing. You get killed for reckless eyeball. Three days later, Carolyn Bryant's husband and brother-in-law went to find Till. They found him at his uncle's house. Then about 2.30 in the morning, that's when I hear him talking. So we're looking for the fat boy from Chicago that did the talking. Say anything about a whistle. I said, God, I'm getting ready to die. These people are going to kill us. They found him in the third room. And that's when they roused him up. He had no idea. Otherwise, he would not have gone. I wasn't going with him because I knew what the deal was. You could just feel death. It was pure terror, pure hell in that house. It was the last time his cousin would see him alive. Poor thing just had no idea. He had no idea what he was in for. Soon after, Emmett Till's body was found in the Tallahatchie River. He had been kidnapped, tortured, shot, and then dumped. A cotton gin fan tied to his neck with barbed wire. After Till's body was sent home to Chicago, Emmett's mother insisted on an open casket at the funeral. She wanted the world to see what had been done to her son. There was no autopsy, no real investigation, no questioning of witnesses, including Wheeler's grandfather, about what happened that day. They told the story. They never interviewed us. Mississippi State Senator David Jordan was a college student. He was there in the courtroom. It was the hottest case in America. At the trial of Roy Bryant and J.W. Milam, Till was painted as a predator. Mrs. Bryant said Till grabbed her and testified that he told her he had been with other white women before. Nobody was serious. This was just a plaything, a mockery of a trial. It was in this courtroom, after just an hour of deliberation, that the all-white jury let the accused walk free. Months later, the men admitted to killing Till in Look magazine. They'd been paid for their interview. Now, six decades later, historian Tim Tyson reveals what Carolyn Bryant told him. Tyson says Bryant lied about Till touching her or uttering obscenities. She says that part's not true. And some question whether she had knowledge of Till's death. Pastor Wheeler described his grandfather running outside when men kidnapped Emmett. He heard them ask uh, this to one, and he said it sounded like a woman's voice. 